Hey, what's up everybody? It's Julius D. Berry, Majestic Studios, and today I have a quick video for you guys um, concerning loading sample banks into your keyboard, loading them into uh, the default bank that was set up by um, whoever uh, made the library, and also going to show you options if you would like to load them into um, another bank. Um, because you already have something loaded into the default bank. Uh, so if that's what you guys are looking for, this is the right video for you. And um, let's jump right in it. All right, so I'm going to assume that you guys have already downloaded these files uh, from uh, <clears throat> Korg's shop website or uh, whatever uh, manufacturer or developer that you are you get your samples from uh, this is specifically tailored toward the M1 library that Korg released for us on today um, so like I said I'm going to assume that you guys have already gone to Korg's website and gone to the Korg shop and downloaded the M1 files extracted the uh, M1 for Nautilus folder, put it on your jump drive and have put the jump drive into your Nautilus. So from there, what we're going to do is we're going to push the mode button. We're going to go to media. Once you get to media, you're going to go to the utility tab. All right. When you get to the utility tab, you're going to select the USB drive that you have plugged into the computer, I mean into the keyboard, by default it's set to HDD, which is the internal drive on the keyboard. You're going to go to whatever your USB drive is named, and you're going to look for the Nautilus, M1 for Nautilus folder, and you're going to push this drop down button at the top right corner of the screen. Now that's going to give you some options as far as things that you can do with your um, with the files that you have selected currently within that folder we're going to go to copy and then we're going to select the drive our internal drive now there are samples within this file and so that's why we're going to copy this file to our Nautilus so we can stream the samples directly from the SSD drive alright so once you get to this screen once you've selected internal drive you should see an option that looks up that look that looks like this. It's going to say cancel or paste. If you push paste, it's going to paste that M1 for Nautilus folder right here to your um, your directory on that internal SSD. So we're going to push paste. It's going to go about that. And now that file M1 for Nautilus should be on your SSD drive in the root directory. All right. So from there. The next thing you're going to going to want to do is you're going to want to set this KSC file to auto load when you turn on your instrument. And to do that, you're going to go to mode. You're going to go to global. Then you're going to go to KSC auto load. And you're going to add KSC. And from here, you're going to look for that file on your um, on your uh, SSD drive. You're going to push the M1 for Nautilus. You're going to open that folder up so you can look inside of the folder and you're going to look for that M1 for Nautilus KSC file. All right. So inside of my KSC, inside of my folder, there are two. It's showing two files. And I remember this used to happen on Chrono Sum 2. I can't remember exactly what would cause this. But the one that has the underscore in front of it, that is not the file that you're looking for. You're looking for the one that just says M1 for Nautilus dot KSC. The one that has the uh, dot underscore or underscore in front of it don't select that file so you push the M1 for Nautilus and then you're gonna push add and it's gonna add the M1 for Nautilus KSC to your preload and since it's on your hard drive it's on your SSD drive that is where the Nautilus, Nautilus will look for those samples um, when it comes time to load them or auto load them when you turn your machine on so once you get to this screen you should see there's going to be an auto load check next to the M1 for Nautilus and your preload. Now, just for you guys who uh, care about this, this will make the load time a little longer. Whenever you put more samples and more files in your auto load, it makes the Nautilus take a little longer to load at boot. That's because it's loading samples in the background. So this is a very small file, so it's not going to affect it much at all. But just so you know in the future that when you add KSC files and samples to your auto load that extends the amount of time that the Nautilus takes to to load. So 
If you want to decrease that time, there are sounds that you can remove from the preload or remove from your auto load, and then that removes the time. But if you add sounds, it's going to make it take longer. So we have the auto load check for the M1 for Nautilus and the preload. So if we do the auto load now, it's going to remove all the samples from memory and it's going to reload your auto load. So let's do that. It says this will erase all EX and RAM samples and then load the selected KSD files. Are you sure you want to proceed? Okay. Okay, so now that that process is complete, you should have your M1 for Nautilus samples should be loaded into your keyboard and just like alongside your preload as normal. So from here, what you want to do is you're going to want to, we're going to go into the PCG file to look at the bank references and see what bank the file is supposed to load to by default. And we're going to um, look at loading it to a default location as well as loading it to a custom location so to do that you're going to go back to mode and you're going to push media again you're going to go to the load tab down here at the bottom and you're going to go to the m1 for nautilus and you're going to open it all right so in here you have all of those underscore files that like i said we're not looking at we're not looking for we're going to look for the ones that don't have the underscore the dot underscore in front so we're going to go right here to the m1 for nautilus dot pcg and we're going to open it. All right. So within that folder, you have the set list, the programs, the combinations and the drum kit. All right. So if you open up the program and look at it, its default location is M. OK. And the combinations. The default bank is M. And in the drum kits the default location is K. So if you want to load this directly to those locations, if you don't already have uh, programs, combinations or drum kits in those locations, then all you would have to do is go to PCG and make sure it's on the load tab. And then you're going to push load. All right. And then you're going to right here where it says PCG contents. You can load all of it. And since you don't have stuff in those other banks, it shouldn't affect anything else. All right, so if you don't have anything else loaded in your machine, custom that you've put in there, um, libraries from uh, another manufacturer or developer, then you can just load this PCG from right here. You'll just push load after you have the PCG selected. This screen will come up and you're going to PCG contents all, you're going to load it and it's going to load into the correct location. If you don't have banks loaded into those locations already, then this will not overwrite anything because there is only data in this file. There is only data in those selected banks that we showed in the last step. So user bank M for the programs and user bank M for the combis and user bank K for the drum kits. So you could be you should be able to press OK here and be safe. But if you have stuff loaded in those locations and you want to be specific about where you place your combis and your programs, then you're going to open this PCG up. And once you get into this screen, you're going to open the programs up again and it's going to take you to Bank M. Select Bank M, you press load and now it's going to ask you where you want to load it. So now you have the ability to load that into any bank any program bank in the keyboard. OK, so let's press O. We're going to load bank M into bank O. It's now writing into internal memory and we should be set. So let's go now. Let's go out to program bank. We're going to go to program. We're going to go to bank O. And here we are, our M1 programs. All right. So push OK. Now we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing for the combis. We're going to go up a layer in the directory, go to the combis. We're going to open it. See, it's bank M here. We're going to push load and we're going to load that to bank O as well. Oh, there's no bank O. Sorry. So we'll just go to bank N. Press OK. Now we go to mode, we're going to go to combi. So we want to check and make sure 
our information is loaded correctly. So we're going to go to N. Okay, guys. All right. So I did that on purpose. I want to show you something. Now, when you load your banks to a different place from where the combinations are normally looking for them, then it's going to have a bunch of initialized programs loaded or whatever sounds are in that bank that you told it to load to. I'm going to say that one more time. If you don't load your programs to the same place that the combinations are looking for them at, then once you load the combis, those programs will be pointing to the wrong location. So you have to change your bank references. So let's look at that. We're going to go to mode. We're going to go to global. And then we're going to go to basic. And we're going to click up here at this top right corner of the screen. Change all bank references. All right. So what we want to do is we want to change bank references of our combis. We want to change from M. We want bank M to reference bank O. Whoops. All right. So you're telling bank M to look at bank O. Okay. And then the same thing down here, you want to tell O. This is the way I do it to keep them where they're one to one and nothing gets confused. And we're going to tell bank O to look for M. OK. All right. So what that does is in your combinations. The combinations that normally would be looking for the, the program locations that would normally be looking in a set place for a program. The combination is going to be looking in another place for it. And we're only doing that because we did not load the programs to the default location. The default location that the combis were looking for, we put them in another place. So we have to tell the Nautilus, hey, those programs are not in that location anymore. You need to go look in another location for them. And this is what the change program is bank references does okay so when we push ok here it's going to now tell our combis that instead of looking in bank m look in bank o and instead of looking in bank o look in bank m so now when i press ok and now when i go back out to that combi mode now this should all be right let's go back to the first one film score and as you see it's not looking for it doesn't have initialized programs anymore all right, so now all is well. Our programs were loaded to a different spot from the norm. Our combis were loaded to a different spot from the normal place. Our programs were loaded to a different location from default. Our combis were loaded to a different location from default. And we changed the bank references so our combis would know where in the programs to pull from in order to make the combi sound right all right so i hope that makes sense um it should make sense if you guys have any questions please place them below in the comments um here's a quick recap when loading third-party libraries if you do not have programs loaded in the banks that they have chosen by default for their library then you can load them with no problem. It won't overwrite anything as long as you don't have anything in their default load location. If you do have sounds in their default load location, then you have to go into to go into the media mode and you have to change where the bank is loaded. You open the directory, open the directory, go into each folder, the program and the combi. You select the file, you push load. Once you push load, it will ask you where you want to load the files. Remember where you want them loaded, load them to that location and remember that location because you're going to need it again once you get to combi mode because the combis that you will load will also reference those programs in the default locations. So if you change the default location for the programs, the combis will not work because they are looking for the programs in their default location. If those programs are not there, 
you will have a bunch of initialized programs in the slots or you will have sounds from other banks in the slots. So in order to make the combis work, you have to go into bank references and you have to change the bank references. You have to tell the combi, I know you were looking in this spot of the program banks for these sounds, but instead I want you to look here. Once you make that change, everything should go smooth and your sounds should sound wonderful and glorious just like the developer intended. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. I hope you guys understand what you're doing now and you can utilize this not only for the for the M1 content for the Nautilus, but any third party library that you guys get going forward, you can use these same concepts and apply them the exact same and they should work. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know if I'm doing good. Um, if you guys are enjoying the content and we'll keep putting stuff out. See you guys next video. Later.